How was finance class today? Of course it was excellent. You know it is my favorite class. What did you do in class? Today we learned about equity valuation. That is how you price stocks. It was very interesting, informative, and important. Or as the professor says I cubed. So tell me, how do you price stocks? To me it seems like stocks just go up and down randomly. Is there any rhyme or reason to them? Yes and no. Stocks react to news and news is largely random. So you are partially correct. To understand more in class began off learning what a stock is. A stock is partial ownership in a firm. Stockholders get to vote for the board of directors. This is because they are in the best position to monitor management. Yeah, that's great, but I don't care. I just want to know how to price a stock so I can make lots of money. That type of thinking is what gets investors in trouble. My professor says that investors should know what they are buying before just looking at financial statements, etc. Well, your finance professor, while patient, is probably poor. I want to be rich. So tell me how to value stocks now so I can start making money. It's not that easy. Stock markets are very competitive. There are many very smart people trying to price stocks and this competition drives prices to be more or less correct most of the time. Let me guess your finance professor told you that too. I have read about market efficiency and think there are limits to the efficiency. Tell your finance professor to read up on behavioral finance. Stocks are not always perfectly priced and people make millions of dollars investing. I want to be one of those people, so just hurry up and tell me how to price a stock so I can get started. No wonder you got hit in the eye. You are so impatient. But I will tell you now. There are two main ways to value stocks, but they are not mutually exclusive. What does mutually exclusive mean? It is a term that means you cannot do both. Why must professors use bigger words than necessary? Couldn't your finance professor just use a simple description? It is probably because they have larger vocabularies than you. I bet it is because they don't make much money and need to impress people using big words. Well that may be, but who cares? What do you have against finance professors? Every occupation has its own language. But finance tends to be more exacting than some other fields. So finance professors' language needs are to be more exacting. Unlike Nissan Taleb who thinks her models are all garbage, I have nothing against finance professors. I am sure some of them are nice people and so long as they tell me how to get rich I am happy. Okay, as I was saying before you interrupted, there are two main ways to price stocks. The first way is theoretically correct, but more difficult. It is called discounted cash flow valuation or DCF for short. It is difficult and time consuming. You have to predict future cash flows available to shareholders based on a whole bunch of assumptions and then take the present value of these so-called free cash flows. The sum of these present values is the value of the firm's equity. Would you listen to yourself? Please, you know I am not here to listen to mumbo jumbo about this and that. I want to make money. Please speak English. I am speaking English. Maybe if you paid attention in your other classes you would understand. As my finance professor said, you have to be good at all areas of business to really understand finance. This is based on accounting now. Your finance professor sounds like a jerk. But I don't care. I just want to make a lot of money. So get on with it. Well you have to find cash flows from the firm. You do this by starting with the income statement. You want to know how much money above its needs a firm makes or in other words the cash that is available to the firm to pay out as dividends to shareholders. That does make sense. I went to the first class of the year. I think you mean cash that the so-called deficit spending unit or it's a can pay back to the surplus spending unit or issue. Yes that is it. You went to a class? I am impressed. Yes. I went to the first class of the year and then decided I would be better off watching grass grow. I want to know how to make money and the teacher droned on about the nexus of contracts, how people make decisions, and discount rates. I do not care about that stuff. I just want to make money. You are so impatient. 
You will likely fail this class. Maybe I will and maybe I won't, but I will be rich. Some of the richest people in the world fail classes. So get back to telling me how to value stocks. For discounted cash flow valuations, you start with net income and then you must make adjustments for non-cash expenses such as depreciation and amortization. Then from the balance sheet you take off increases in net working capital and add capital expenditures. You do this for every year until the terminal or horizon value. You then take the present value of these expected free cash flows and add them up. The total is the total value of equity. Does the teacher like talking to himself? I have to think that most of the class must be asleep by the time the lecture is over. I am not telling you any more if you keep insulting finance professors. They are people too. They probably have feelings. I will be quit insulting them, for now. But I still have problems with their valuation techniques. What are your problems with their valuation techniques? So I find cash flows, discount them all at a risk-adjusted interest rate. Then add up the present values, and divide by the number of shares. That is correct. You may be smarter than I give you credit for. Well an awful lot can go wrong. I think I have new respect for Taleb. I don't know sales for next year, and finance professors do not have a crystal ball. So how can they project out cash flows for many years? Yes, there is much that can go wrong. Many assumptions may be inaccurate. That is why we test our assumptions. We use sensitivity analysis, scenario analysis, and simulations to see which assumptions are important and then focus our efforts on them. But you are still exposed to making mistakes due to reliance on past distributions and biases inherent in the forecasting process. Wow, you have looked into this. Taleb would be proud. You are smarter than I thought. These are problems. And models can only take us so far. Over-reliance on any model will get us into trouble. We know all models are wrong, we just don't know how they are wrong. That is why they have a second way of pricing stocks. It is a market multiple model. The model is based on ratios and compare ratios such as price to book and PE ratios. This method is not as good in theory but insulates you from some of the problems with assumptions that you mentioned. It is widely used in practice for this reason. You have my attention. Go on. This method is based on the idea that similar firms should have similar multiples. So if a firm is out of line, either with itself from history or with other firms in the same industry, it could be mispriced and deserves more attention. For example, if all the firms in the industry have a P-E ratio of 15 except one that has a P-E ratio of 10, that firm may be undervalued. But what of differences? For example one firm uses different accounting methods that inflate earnings and thus lower the price to earnings ratio. Or differences in growth rates. Or difference in accounting systems internationally. Very good. You are smarter than you look. But that is not saying much. Answer my question. And do not just stand there insulting me. I want to go make money not stand here talking to you. What do you do when ratios are different? That is why there are so many different ratios or multiples to consider. If a firm changes its earnings, that may not have as much impact on price to sales or EBIT to multiples. So when using this second method you should use many different ratios to be sure you get the right one. You can take the weighted average price based on many different ones. That does make sense. So I can use PE and market to book, PEG, and EBITDA and any other ones that are appropriate for this industry and this firm. Exactly. And you can also still use the discounted cash flow valuation as well. So essentially you are trying to surround the price. You can even take the weighted average price based on how much confidence you have in the various models. That way if you are off on one or two assumptions, hopefully the other methods will allow you to see your errors. Very good. This was useful. I am going to go make lots of money now. Would you like to come with me? We can make millions. No, not yet. I still want to learn about market efficiency and behavioral finance. That is coming up next in class. Maybe you can come too. I will sit next to you and keep you awake. I don't know. 
Did Warren Buffett ever take finance classes? I am going to be the next Warren Buffett. Yes, in fact Warren Buffett did take many classes in studies valuation to this day. He is famous for using market price to book value and other ratios for finding so-called value stocks. Okay, I will come to class. You have convinced me. Maybe I will come to realize finance professors are not all bad after all. They can be all bad, can they? I mean a finance professor made this video after all.